Hello and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast, for all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and in preparation for winter, for a three-part podcast series, I'll be focusing on the topics nutrition, health and housing. I'm joined by Chagas advisor John Kelly to find out how to manage nutrition over the winter. I first ask John, what are the key factors farmers need to consider to maximise performance in the coming months? It's very important that when your animals indoors, um, feed costs increase considerably versus outdoor grazing that when you have uh, cattle inside that that uh, you're getting the most value for for your money because your, your feed costs are expensive so i suppose we break it down into uh, the environment that the animal is in and um, the housing etc and um, whether they have enough feed space have they have enough access to water is there good adequate ventilation in the sheds and then the next secondly we're looking at the, the feed the quality of the feed that's been fed to the animal and uh, we're trying to make sure that that their 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 maximum intake and um, that they can achieve their maximum growth rate and try and avoid any digestive upsets or any stress through to change the diet or feed etc and um, because any 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 time an animal that is um, under a bit of stress or a change of diet, um, it, it can it can affect the growth rate. So it, it's very important that um, we can try and achieve as maximum growth rate over the winter, particularly for fattening cattle. Um, inside that we're looking for a kilo to 1.2 kilos live weight per day, and if you're storing cattle, weanlings store cattle, uh, that we're trying to get 0.6 of a kilo per day in the winter period. That's great, John. And I suppose the really the first step comes to being able to formulate a diet and it comes down to silage quality. So if we don't know the silage quality, it's really hard to guess what concentrates to feed. So how can farmers go about getting a silage sample tested? Contact your um, your agricultural advisor. You can get a silage test done very easily. Either your advisor can uh, go out and take the sample for you or the farmer yourself can, can take it themselves. Um, there's, there's two ways you could wait till the side the pit is open and take a double sample w sample shape five or six points on the pit um you'd be filling a plastic um zip tight bag um and you can send that off to a, a lab through your agricultural advisor or you can alternatively go to the labs directly or sitting yourself but um it's very important catherine that wherever you're testing the silage, that it's an accredited lab um, because um, that, 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 that it's a valid result, that it's accurate, that it's accredited by the Department of Agriculture um, so that you get an accurate result back. Look, at most of the time, you know, you have your silage pits filled, you have your bales in, in the stack. You ha- have to try and work with what you have with, the, with the, the quality that you have at the start of the year. You're not going to be able to to change that so it's very important that when you get the silage tested that you know what sort of dmd you have dry matter and um, crew protein content etc to see is it good quality bad quality um, and then you can put a plan in place then and feed feed um feed um concentrates etc to uh to make sure that you're hitting the growth rates of your 0.6 for your for your um store period or, or one kilo plus for a fattening animal uh, uh, a lot of the time uh, you'd see silage that's cut late um, once you get into June the silage quality can, can, can fall every week um, the silage needs to be leafy and good quality that way in the sense that if you can cut it in the end of May or early May as early in May as possible you're trying to balance yield with uh, quality but um, generally you'll see that the early cut silage silage is cut in May is the best quality it's just the most leaf content and as a result it'll lead to your DMD 70 plus DMD um, as you get into June the grass starts to turn stemmy it starts to get bulky and once that happens every week that goes by you're losing up five DMD per week the, the bulkier it gets the quality reduces and if you have bad quality silage you're going to have to feed more concentrates that's going to be cost a lot more money so as I said before it's the most expensive 
uh, time of the year is, is the winter and making sure that you try and keep the cost down and try and have the silage as good a quality as you can. I suppose, John, if the farmer takes the silage sample and the results come back, what's the difference between a 60 versus 70 DMD on the quality of the wean and performance over the winter period? What cost is that to the farmer? Well, so between between 60, the cost between 60 DMD and a 70 DMD silage about 80 euros a head in meal costs um, to try and, try and match that growth rate. Uh, 60 DMD silage to try and get um, 0.6 of a kilo per day, let's say, for example, in a weanling or a store. You're talking about feeding two and a half to three kilos of meal along with that silage per day. And that rations are costing over 300 to 330 a ton now, depending on, on uh, the purchasing method, whether it's in bulk or in bags. Um, you'd expect that would cost about 80 euros a head over the over um, a hundred day period. So it's it's quite uh, expensive. It's a, it's a big cost if you have a lot of animals in, indoors to feed. Um, so the main thing is we're trying to look at that you try that you're planning for your winter. Um, you're planning for it really in the month of April and May that you try and get your silage closed and quoted early because it makes a big difference in feed costs. John, when it comes to cattle finishing rations, what are farmers needing to look out for? Yeah, it's a good question, Catherine. Um, this time every year, I'd be farmers' clients of mine would be telephoning, uh, looking for advice on uh, what, what rations to feed. And they'd often send me in uh, a printout of the the, the breakdown of the ingredients that they've been quoted for a ration from their their, their merchant, and um, you'd see a wide range of, of qualities in the sense that some rations have an awful lot of ingredients in them. They could have seven or eight ingredients, and you're diluting really the um, the content of of the good quality ingredients more often than not in that. Um, a simple ration, really, um, three or four way mix. Is, uh, three or four ingredients is, is, is enough in my experience um, and the first thing that I'm looking for when I'm going to to, to give advice on that is, is is what is the energy content you know uh, and what ingredients are in that uh, as an energy feed so like you're looking for your, your barley and maize as your main energy ingredients um, in, in for rations and um, Generally, you'll find that the, the, the ingredient that's listed first is the one that has the, the, the greater percentage in that mix. So I'd always be looking for, for barley or maize in the top two. And you'd have to also look for a, a protein source. Like, for example, a finisher ration, um, 12 or 13% protein would be, could suffice, depending on silage quality, um, whereas a grower a uh, weanling ration, you'd want it to have 16% protein. Uh, and you're looking at your soya bean as the ingredient, as the protein source. It is the best quality protein ingredients available. So I'll be looking for them top, the first three ingredients, I'm looking for barley, maize, and, and, and soya bean. And um, every ration will have fiber source, um, just so that to try and avoid digestive upsets in the rumen, that it slows down the rate of digestion um, it, it acts as a balancer, really, because your your energy ingredients, barley, maize, can tend to be very starchy and quite acidic. So inclusion of a fibre is is a standard in every ration, and you're looking at beet pulp for soya hulls. Um, and uh, really, like if you're looking at a good quality ration, barley, maize, soya bean, and beet pulp or soya hulls, like if you have them ingredients only in it, you have a good quality ration. I'd be very wary of them. Um, the likes of palm kernel, sweet feed, pollard, etc. They're lower quality ingredients. Like, for example, as an energy value, um, barley is one UFL uh, per kilo as fed. And if you're looking back then to um, pollard, for example, you know, which is the, referred to as a kind of a, a filler ingredient, you're talking 0.8 of UFL. So you're only getting um, eight percent of the energy value is what you could buy when you're purchasing barley, you know. And uh, it, it nearly costs the same to 
to make the ration using good ingredients as bad ingredients, really. Um, poor quality ingredients. Like by the time you pay for transport costs and blowing it into bins, etc., or bagging it, there mightn't be that much difference really per ton in the better quality ration than a poor quality one. So I'd always be looking at value for money more so than uh, or looking at the looking at the, the value of the product you're getting. They'd be looking for the best return on, on the feed, you know, and it's not always down to price, you know, like you could be skimping ten euro a ton, but you could end up with a poor quality feed. Like I'd always look at the quality and if you're in doubt, you know, it's always good to talk to your agricultural advisor and get them and look at the at the rations and, and, and help help you decide um what what ration to go for. That's great, John. For suckler cows, John, what will be important for the winter period? Suckler cows, I suppose it depends on whether you have spring calving cows or you have autumn calving cows. Um your spring calving cows really you're talking about keeping them on a maintenance diet, you know. Um if you get your silage tested, um, you know, your your sixty five DMD silage fed ad lib to a suckler cow would suffice because you want to maintain her condition. You're trying to avoid her uh, becoming over fat, which could lead to calving difficulty, etc. So you you could direct maybe your your your, your poor quality silage in the yard um, to your uh, spring calving suckler cows. Um, for your autumn calving suckler cows, it's very important that you you give them your best uh, silage that's available. Um, but you're you're talking your 75 DMD silage because that cow is under a lot of pressure. That cow is trying to maintain herself and also trying to to milk to have enough milk yield to to, to rear her calf. Um, so it's important that you get the silage tested to see what is the protein content also in the silage. If the silage is low in protein for an autumn calving cow with a calf at foot in the shed in the winter, you may need to supplement with some soybean, for example, to keep the protein up um, so that the cow will have enough milk. And additionally, um, most will decide to perhaps creep feed calves in the winter um, in the sheds, the autumn calving, the autumn calves. And John, you touched on it earlier there, the importance of the value of the ration that farmers are buying. And we've seen a significant rise in the price of grain and feed ingredients and their climbed significantly again over the past few weeks. Why is this? Yeah, it's 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 quite volatile, um, Catherine, actually. At the minute, um, commodity prices are, are are up and they're going up. They're jumping in price every every day. Um, <clears throat> I was talking to um, a local merchant here in in Offaly and uh, they were saying that like they have to be watching the market that it could change in price in from the morning to the evening uh, a price could, it could go up by 10 euros a ton for straight um, they're saying that the biggest um, reason for it is that there's there's globally this, the supplies of maize, wheat and barley is tight um, and I suppose there's some speculation that too that many are waiting for the harvest to finish in uh, South America, um, they're not sure fully of what global stocks will be like. Um, but the, the main reason that um, they're putting down to the, the increase in prices to is the um, the shipping and the freight transport costs. Um, apparently, the grain traders now before they even they have to ensure that they have a ship available to ship the product before they even buy the product. Um, many of them are. Have been getting caught out earlier on, making deals, buying straights, and then ending up with no ways of shipping it to the country. And that is the, the biggest problem. It's been a, a huge increase in the amount uh, in the cost of shipping, and that's the same with all uh, commodities. It's not just feeds um, for livestock, but um, that's you're talking prices compared to this time last year for straights gone up by between 40 to 60 euros per ton for straight and there's only one way that's going to go at the end at the end of the line when farmers are purchasing rations rations are going to be considerably more expensive than they were this time last year like you're talking uh, rations are going to be between 300 maybe to 40 a ton this winter depending on the method of 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 Take, taking the ration into the farm, whether it's in bags or it's in bulk or it's tipped in, in the shed or whether it's collected. Um, it's very important that you 
why would the, the farmers talk to their merchants? Um, maybe go to them and 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 see how how many tons of, of feed they're going to need for the winter. Like it all it starts when you get your silage tested to know what quality you have, to know then how much meal you're going to have to feed per day and work that out as to many tons you need. It's important to talk to the mer- your merchant um, and just get a few um, conditions, I suppose, outlined that what way is it going to be? Is it going to be you want to be paid on delivery? Is it going to be credit? What are the terms? Um, whether you're going to collect it yourself, whether it's going to be blown into bins, bags. Like There's a big difference in cost between collecting uh, a ration yourself uh, loose um, versus getting it delivered in small bags. Like It could be 30 euros a ton and the difference there. So whatever means that you'd have trying to buy in bulk and trying to buy it in loose feeds would be the cheaper option. But they're saying that in springtime, the, the, the Irish, the native barley, Irish barley could run out and they want to be importing barley at that time of year. So particularly, there's been a lot of barley sent for distilling um, in Ireland this year. But that, that takes from availability for feed barley. So all those factors that are, are going to lead to, to increase in prices. I don't see the prices coming down, Catherine, in the short term, you know, particularly over the winter. Yeah, really, John, the prices are going to vary from farm to farm and a lot of the topics that you've, reasons you've mentioned there now, and I suppose really attention to detail is all important and even more so this year and the importance of getting silage quality tested. Thanks very much, John. Thanks, Catherine. That's all for this week's episode and my thanks to John for joining me on the show. Join me next week for the second part of the podcast series, Getting Winter Ready, when I'll be discussing best practice tips at housing relating to animal health. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss the show. For all other updates from our Beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.